It's like James Brown saying, I'm black and I'm proud, back in the 60s. A lot of people were like, yeah, you know what? I am black and I'm proud. You know, when they might have thought it, but it needed someone to say it in a musical form to unlock that. My name is uh, Jason Valerio, AKA Trackademics. Um, and I'm a professional musician. We're here now, but there was a sound that came before us. There were people that came before us. Those people weren't too different from us, you know, when we listened to the topics that they were singing about. Music definitely is like almost a window, a connection to the past. My name is Lewis Watts and I'm a photographer. I'm an archivist. Someone who's a, a actor um, who grew up in the film are Danny Duncan and he said on a Friday night in the 50s and early 60s from Hayes Street to Post, which is like, you know, that's half a mile, at a Friday night, it would be filled with black people, you know, go, to going to and from the clubs, and that doesn't happen anymore because San Francisco is one of the few major cities with a diminishing African-American population because people can't afford to live here. When Pearl Harbor happened, the shipyards in Hunters Point and in Oakland and Richmond and different places were changing from making civilian ships to making ships and tanks for the war effort and they needed people to work there. So people came from the South, they brought their interest in jazz and blues and black music and culture. And that's exactly why the, at its height it was called the Harlem of the West because it was a, a thriving a black population and community in the middle of San Francisco. When it comes to the contribution of African Americans to modern music, the roots are so deep. All American forms of music have been touched by African Americans. You know, you can't know where you're going if you don't know you're, where you've been. A lot of hip hop that comes out, we don't know that a lot of those choruses and hooks that they're doing, or a lot of lyrics they might be saying, are borrowed from older hip hop and borrowed from like soul music and jazz music. A lot of musicians who had come to San Francisco to play, they weren't allowed to be able to stay in hotels downtown. And so they would stay in the Fillmore and after they had maybe done their gig, they would come and there would be jam sessions. Uh, John Coltrane was a, you know, became a really famous musician who played with Miles Davis. And so this is a, a sort of evidence that someone who went on to become a very famous international musician sort of learned part of his craft by doing these jam sessions. Just 100 years after Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation that freed the slaves. Check this out, man. We rolling this way. That march in 1963, that was a bit of nonsense. We ain't rolling like that no more. Matter of fact, the young black America, we rolling up with seminars, press conferences, and straight up rallies. Am I right? We gonna get what we got to get. While you might not be able to do certain things you want to do because of the laws back then, music was something that was always a way to express yourself. When we listened to the topics that they were singing about, some of the struggles that they were representing through their art. There's a direct link from the sort of means of expression um, from slave times, which were kind of field haulers and, and spirituals that evolved into the blues evolved into jazz, they evolved into rhythm and blues, and to hip hop, and there's a direct line that goes through time, and all of those, from different times, are the ways that we both determine who we are and express who we are, and express what we're going through. Passion of profit, the answer is obvious. Being from the Bay Area, it's really all about intersections, intersectionality, and, and I, I really feel like, in order to represent that type of melting pot, I, I like to take music from different genres in different, um, different places and kind of mix them all together. Music is really a reflection of people. If you can make music that a lot of different types of people will like, you know, those people may start to get together and, and form friendships and bonds and a whole new scene. And then that helps our communities get better. It helps our communities start to interact and be friends with people you might not have been friends with before. You know, the art that comes from here, um, a lot of it's always pushing the boundaries of what, you know, social boundaries, whether it's racism, you know, sexism, gay rights. 
The Bay Area has always been on the, the cusp of that. The wonderful thing about music is just emotion. You can make people feel certain things by just having certain sounds and certain instruments. And I feel like that's not gonna go away. As long as we can hear, um, we're gonna be making music. This is my music. This is our music. This is the music of my people. The music that we worked for. The music that we were beaten for. The music that we played when we were low. The music that we played for joy. This is Black Music History.